It's been 24 months since I ended things with Lisa. If I said it was the dumbest thing I've ever done, would you believe me? Well, sadly, it was dumb. My life went to hell after that horrific event. Let's start this show with the important stuff, and then I'll lead you to what happened to me. Settle in. We have an interesting fifth episode of This Is Complicated. First, Jessica, my ex-wife, is well and very much alive. How on earth is that possible, I hear you wonder. Well, the cancer scare was just that. A scare. A junior doctor misdiagnosed Jessica. She got an all clear after her following scan, and whew. In fact, Jess is pregnant and expecting her baby with her girlfriend, Carrie Ann. Twenty-four months ago, when I left Lisa to see Jessica, I spent three months with her and decided to go. At the first sign of Jessica's all clear, I called Lisa to try to apologize and, well, sweet-talk her back into my arms. And the result was... The result was a massive failure. Lisa didn't pick up the phone. So anyway, I tried to leave it there. But then, being the foolish man that I am, I got desperate to have her back, so I came back to London hoping I'd see her. I went to her old apartment. I knocked, only to find a large beefy man with a pop belly staring at me, bewildered. Lisa had moved on and didn't leave an address. So, yeah, I was fucked. As Lisa blocked me on Facebook after we broke up, I didn't know how to get into contact with her, so I left it alone. Three months after that, I got some bad news from one of my friends, who posted a picture of Lisa and her new man. They looked happy. They looked in love. I was, of course, devastated and heartbroken, but I soldiered on. I lost my soccer coaching job seven months later after turning up the training drunk. The night before, I had heard the not-so-lovely news that Lisa was engaged to be married. Anyway, I drank myself silly, turned up to work drunk, and got sacked. That led to me losing my apartment. It then led to me sofa surfing with a couple of my friends. It led to me growing a full beard and looking like a ruthless man. Not that that's a bad thing, because I rock the beard well. Anyway, led to a deterioration of my mental health. It led to me being hospitalized. I was, at one point, sectioned under the Mental Health Act, so, yeah, this portion of the story is just sad. I should get back to the fun bits. Anyway, things have been terrible for months, and you know what? I only have myself to blame. I made a wrong decision that cost me everything I loved. Lesson number one, folks. You have someone who loves you, you should know how lucky you are when you have that person in your life. That person probably adores you. They just want you to love them back. So don't waste that precious love you have. You never know when and if it'll go away. Anyway, this whole disaster was my fault. I did this to myself. I'm the biggest fool on this planet. I don't deserve a smidge of happiness, and you know what? I probably won't get one either. Great. I'm miserable now. I walk into a coffee shop. I have good news. I'm now living in a shared house. I have a few good roommates. I have no girlfriend, but still, can't complain. Give me a second. I'll probably come up with one. I've just shopped at Oxfam. I bought myself secondhand clothes and some items for my tiny bedroom. I have a Ted Baker suit. Two M&S dress shirts, some tremendous secondhand Russell and Bromley dress shoes, a lovely red tie, and a Michelle Obama book to read. I have five interviews lined up today. One is for a personal assistant job working for a guy who works at Nike. Another job is a data entry job for a startup company. Another job is for a call center role, and the other two are office cleaning jobs. Despite this varied list of jobs, I'm breaking it. I walk over to the counter and order myself a drink. There's a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and my face falls. It's Lisa. Not only Lisa but an engaged Lisa, with a sparkling diamond ring, trying to blind me. You're a breath of fresh air. Hi. Uh, hi! I didn't know you'd be here. Uh, let me just get my coffee and I'll go. I stare up ahead. Lisa stands beside me. There's tension. How have you been? 
You look like a man tortured to near death for information. Say you have so I can laugh. I'm on top of the world. Are you happy? Why do I have a funny feeling you're not telling me the truth? No comment. Can I go now? I'm not a pretend headmistress, stopping you from going home at the end of the day. Great. Bye. I try to walk past Lisa, but she stops my progress. Can we talk for a second? That's a bad idea. You're a hard nut to crack today. Wow, it's just talking. You're engaged. Once again, it's just talking. I'll pass, but thanks. The waitress puts my drink on the counter. I go to grab it, but Lisa takes it from me before I can get to it. A little birdie told me Jessica is alive, and in her final trimester of pregnancy. Yep, she is. Why aren't you angry? Why would I be? She's your ex-wife. You care about her, and so I should follow the party line. It's that simple. Are we finally done? That came out as a surprise, considering she was dying the last time we spoke. <sighs> she got wrongly diagnosed by a junior doctor. It was just a cyst in her breast. Oh, cool. I guess it's better than being dead. I'd take that any day. Yep. Let's celebrate and party. Sort out your tone, please. I'm sick of your attitude towards me. I'm making an effort. You should do the same back. I try to grab my coffee, but Lisa moves out of the way to avoid me taking it. Then, after a beat, she smiles. You're not getting away from me that easily. You will talk eventually. We have nothing left to discuss. We both moved on. We're both happy with the decisions we made. So let's live with it. I did not decide to end our relationship, if I remember correctly. It was all you. I'm the one who should be upset about seeing you. But I'm not. Why? Because I'm not a child. I'm an adult. So show me respect. My intention isn't to upset you. Well, you're doing a mighty job of it anyway. I start to walk out of the coffee shop. Lisa follows me. How long were you sectioned for? I stop walking. That's none of your business. I still consider you as a friend. So it is. It happened, and now I'm fine. I start walking again. Lisa continues to follow me. You need to leave me alone. I'm sorry for shutting you out. Why? You didn't know I was having problems. You were none the wiser. Actually, I did. I stop walking and turn around. What? Your best friend Colin kept me in the loop with what was happening to you. Why would you want to be in the loop when you wanted nothing to do with me? Maybe I still had feelings for you. You still had feelings for me? As in past tense or what? Do you want an honest answer? No, but you'll give it anyway. I think I'm still in love with you. I stare at Lisa, shocked. We're back where we left off. What did you just say? You're not deaf, Nathan. No, but I'd still like for you to repeat yourself. Fine. I, Nathan, love you like a teenage girl who loves makeup. I, Nathan, want to be held in your arms like a baby chick wants to be held by its mother. I love you. I've opened Pandora's box. So deal with it. It's done. I didn't expect to hear this today. And now that I have, I have to say you're a pretty terrible person. <laughs> I know. You're engaged, woman. Unhappily, I might add. Even if you are, your heart should belong to your fiancé. What if I don't want that? You should have the courage to break it off with your fiancé and then pursue other targets of your affections. Well, what can I say? I'm a terrible person. I can't be that kind of person. I'm not asking you to start an affair with me, Nathan. I'm bad, but I'm not that horrible. 
Although I talked to my cousin about this the other day, she seemed under the impression that I was. What are you asking of me then? I really don't know. What are you doing to me here, Lisa? Nothing. I promise. Look, I have a job interview. I need to prep for it. Can we just forget this and pretend it didn't happen? Nathan, I'm sorry, but I will say some things you don't want to hear from me. I have to release it out of me. Don't do this. Please. I'm begging you. Nathan, darling, I want you back. No! Let me go! As soon as you say you don't feel anything for me right now, I will. Go on, say it! I... Lisa smiles. It's not fair! You're trying to put me off by doing funny faces! Well, it's working, and I'm winning. I look at my watch. I have to go to this job interview. We can't do this. I'll come with you. I'm sure you have work. I get up from the bench, but Lisa pushes me back down. I'm a CEO of a PR firm. I think if I want, I can take time off work. CEO? Whoa, someone's moved up in the world. Oh, you bet your ass she has. How many people do you manage? 10,000. Whoa! Your blood pressure must be through the roof. Yep, but don't be impressed. My father owns the firm. I'm the temporary CEO until the firm finds my replacement. How long have they been looking for one? It's been about six months of them searching for one. It sounds like your dad's putting off hiring someone so he can groom you to take on the position. Please, say more on that. A firm that big can't search for six months without delivering results. Huh. I hadn't thought about that. Anyway... I get up from the bench and stop walking. Lisa follows me. So what do you say? Can I tag along to your job interviews? I won't pressure you to get back together with me. I promise. Yeah, I don't believe you. But excellent effort trying to convince me otherwise. You soften slightly. Is that a deal I see on the horizon? No. Fine. I'll coach you to make sure you get the job. How does that sound? Everything I try and do to get rid of you won't work, will it? I'm glad that's coming across. Shall we head off? I loathe you. I know. Oh, do I care? Mmm, nah, I don't. You're so annoying. You're like a bee buzzing around me, looking to sting me. No, I'm more like piles in your butt, stopping you from getting comfortable. Do you want to think about that sentence for a second? Yeah... I'm weird. I'm glad you've noticed that. We start walking. I stand up from my chair. I've been called up to go interview for my data entry job. You've got this. Just be confident. Yeah, like it's that easy. Ugh, oh, wait. Pull it together, dude. I should slap myself. No need. Oh! I know I wanted it, but still! Ooh! How do you feel now? Not a lot better, but thanks. Oh, the receptionist is calling you. The receptionist waves me over. I walk towards her and put on my fakest smile. Good luck! I walk into an office. I walk out of the office and take off, walking fast. Lisa is behind me, following me. Why are you escaping here like you've just shat on their carpet? Let's just say my personality did not go down like a house on fire. What did you do? Did you try to flirt with one of the women? No. It backfired. I'm not a flirt. All I'm saying is from experience. Your flirting skills are about as good as Trump's on women in the 80s. That's enough. Look, I got asked for an example of when I last worked in a team, and... And you mentioned your university threesome. Are you insane? It was the only answer that came to me. 
There's nothing I couldn't have said differently. You could have not said that. Look at me. Am I saying I had a threesome in college? You just did. Great. Now I'm as dumb as you. It gets worse. What could be worse than telling a room full of interviewers that you had a threesome back in college? The head interviewer was one of the women I slept with back in college. Jesus. What a freaking small world. There was a glint in her eyes. I think she wanted me to take her there and then. Ugh. Please stop talking. We start heading off. I have my following interview to go to. What's the company? Nike. I'm hoping to get a personal assistant job for one of the young execs there. The pay is good. Okay. You're not getting that job. Why not? Nike is a reputable company. They might be, but the person hiring his assistant will look at your legs and see you wearing trousers. And that means what, exactly? You say like it's a bad thing. It is, because the guy will think, why would I hire this guy when there's a woman there giving me the eye? How do you know so much about this? How else? I've got hormones. Uh, come on, we're living in the Me Too era. Yeah, well, the world still hasn't evolved. But again, I'm talking from experience. Not all men are weak. Men hire a sexy woman. Young men want attractive women working under them. That's still silly. We see a bald man in his 40s walking towards us with his assistant. She's blonde, attractive, and mid-twenties. Do you need any more proof? The man winks at his assistant. No, you're right. But damn, I wish you weren't. I hope you weren't. What's your next job? I've got an interview for a cleaning job lined up, so I'm going to go prep for it. Or, if you want... No. You don't know what I'm about to say. Yes, I do. You want to hire me as your assistant. As my... what? Dude, Tim is my hero. He's a six-foot ex-military guy who knows how to treat his women like they're goddesses. What? Why are you so gullible? T whatever. I have the best assistant a girl could wish for on a serious note. I'd trade her for you, but I wouldn't get any work done in the office. Are you saying you wouldn't because I'm so gorgeous looking? Yep. The animal sex would get in the way. I cringe. Stop cringing. I'm joking. I'm still not working for you. I wanted to hire you for my mailroom. Do you want me to work in a mailroom? Do you think so little of my abilities that you want me to work in the mailroom? Pretty much. Yeah, I'm good for nothing, so I don't know why I feel offended. I accept. Good. I'll get my HR team to contact you later. Now, I think lunch is in order. We are not getting back together. Let's just go and eat. We walk outside of the building. Lisa and I are sitting down. We've just ordered two sirloin steaks to be sent over to our table. I take a look at the menu and nearly have a heart attack. What? Uh, um, nothing. Lisa picks up her menu. Don't worry. This dinner is on me. I wasn't worried about that. Come on. <sighs> Fine, I was. Thank you so much. <laughs> you haven't said I look gorgeous yet. Well, you're engaged. I can't be that guy. I might want to be, but I can't. Andrew and I have been rocky for a while now. I say, Rocky, let's just say our relationship is a bus falling off a cliff and then exploding. We aren't surviving. I don't want to hear this. Fine, we'll talk about something else. Is Andrew more handsome than me? Thought you didn't want me to talk about him. I'm a weak man, just tell me. He's nowhere near more handsome than you. You're a high-end model compared to him. Oh, that's quite flattering. Thank you. Andrew and I don't even live together, and sometimes we can go days without speaking to each other. And you're engaged to him? And when we do talk, it feels rushed, awkward, and uncomfortable. Seriously? What did you see in him? I don't even know. My dad pushed us together. He was trying to make Andrew into a partner at the firm, and so... 
he got you to seduce Andrew so that he would accept the partnership. Yeah, a little bit. But seriously, it wasn't as disgusting as you're thinking. We had good times together too. Name one good moment you had with Andrew. Ooh, that's a tricky question. It should be easy. You're engaged to him. You know, I can't think of one. <laughs> I don't think you love this, Andrew. Yeah, I'm getting a sense of that myself. Do you want to stay in an unhappy relationship, going nowhere? Nope. Lisa stands up. I need to go break things off with Andrew. Lisa walks off. You don't have my new number! Lisa walks back over. Damn, I nearly lost you again. I take out my phone and hand it to Lisa. She puts in her number. She calls it, and we have each other's numbers. Give me an hour, and I'll call you with a progress report. Sit tight. Lisa walks off. I'm lying on my bed, staring at the ceiling. It's been over three hours since Lisa and I talked, and she hasn't phoned me. I'd say I'm worried, but that's an understatement. I get a text. It's from Lisa. Meet me downstairs. I get up and rush downstairs. I open my front door. Lisa stands. The tiny dick was fucking our cleaner! What?! I went home to break things off, and the dickhead was in our bed doing our cleaner from behind with this shriveled thing! Can I get permission to laugh? Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to. It, it's a form of Tourette's. <laughs> You're such a little child. Anyway, the affair has been going on for years. Oh, Jesus. It gets even worse. The little bitch is a month away from giving birth. And you didn't know it was Andrew's baby? The cleaner told me the conception happened from a one-night stand. Are you that gullible? Or blind. Both do seem to be correct. I was not expecting all of this today. Anyway, Andrew refuses to acknowledge the baby when it's born. Instead, he wants nothing to do with it. I have to ask again. What did you see in Andrew? This guy's insane. I had noticed that, but thanks. Yet, you still wanted to marry him, woman. I... no. Stop rubbing it in. Well... Someone has to. I've spent an hour driving my cleaner to my lawyer so she can come up with this action plan to tackle this situation. Oh, that's brutal. The little whore wants child payments, and I know how rich Andrew is. <sighs> that bitch is getting paid. I don't know what to say. Well, I do. I'm so relieved. You are. You're full of surprises today. I thought the breakup was going to hurt Andrew, but now that it's over and I have the moral high ground, I can chill, relax and have no more problems. Lucky you. So, what happens to us? It's straightforward. I want you back. Are you sure that's wise? My heart knows what it wants or needs. I'm thirsty, and you're the water I need. Wow. You do like me again. Up until today, I never thought that was a possibility for us. God works miracles. Are your roommates home? Nope. Why? We've got business to conduct upstairs. Lisa opens the door. Lisa takes my hand and leads me upstairs. Oh, I forgot to mention. HR has offered you employment. You have to show up at work first thing on Monday. You'll be paid every Friday. You will report to me. I'm sure many perks come from working under you. You're about to find out. We reach my bedroom door. I open. Lisa and I walk in. We shut the door, and she kisses me. I wake up the next morning. My eyes are closed, but there's a smile on my face. I reach out my hand to touch Lisa. She's not on the bed. I open my eyes. 
Lisa! Are you here? There's nothing but silence. I pick up my phone and call her. The number I ring is unavailable. Huh. I guess she didn't really like me. There I was, thinking we were moving forward when, in fact, we weren't at all. Such a fool. This love was never complicated. It was just a mistake.